Hello everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Today is April 2nd, 2020. I came across this uh, filing here. Uh, it's about Brandon Boudreaux and Melanie Boudreaux. And it says here, Brandon Boudreaux's Lies and Deceptions. Uh, it was posted March 25th, 2020. I will leave the link in the comments so you can go over it yourself. But I'm going to read through this. It says here, once again, Brandon Boudreaux has made unsubstantiated and false accusations, many of which are shown by his own submitted materials. Robert Jarvis is Melanie's attorney. It says, um, it is also unfortunate his attorney perpetuates his lies in court filings. Attorneys should not be puppets of their clients, but should instead give legal counsel and not file false pleadings. So why is he filing this? Uh, Mr. Boudreau continues his narcissistic attempts to control Mrs. Pulowski. That is her new last name. Melanie Pulowski has never been part of a cult. She may understand some of the extremist beliefs of her aunt, Lori Vallow, and Chad Daybell, but that does not mean that she has adopted those beliefs as her own. Melanie does not judge those who accept those extremist beliefs, just like she does not judge you or me for what we believe. Melanie holds on to her own core beliefs as an active member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Melanie's new husband, Ian, has confirmed this to the FBI. Ian's summary of information given to law enforcement, written and delivered to Melanie's lawyers, includes his conclusions that Melanie is not part of the extremist group. There is no evidence that Melanie joined that group, attended any of the group's activities, or supported anything to that group. Law enforcement should be investigating Brandon and Ian's ex-wife, Natalie, for illegally obtaining Ian's confidential summary. Mr. Boudreaux unlawfully left with and kept their children out of state in Utah, telling American Fort Police that his parents' address was his address. He kept the children out of school for about a month. Melanie has never abandoned her children and has always intended to have her children with her, providing furnished rooms ready for them in her home in Idaho. She had her children on the lease for her apartment in Rexburg and all her children's belongings, except for the few items she left on the curb at her Arizona residence. Those 12 items included a couple of old twin mattresses, old and broken toys, old clothing. They were certainly not all the children's belongings. The photograph shows 12 items, not all belongings for four children. That is obvious from the photograph. Again, Brennan is lying and trying to mislead the court. This is all what Melanie's lawyer is saying. Even Mr. Boudreaux's claim that Melanie packed up in the middle of the night is false and deceptive. Look at the exhibit photograph of the moving van. This was Halloween. That night the moon set at about 9 p.m. and you can see the moon almost set in the photograph. We also have a text message stating the packing was almost complete about 10 30 p.m. There are so many false statements in Brandon's pleading that this short statement can't address them all. If you compare the police statements the search warrants and dates and times, you will see Melanie has fully cooperated with law enforcement. You will also see that Mr. Boudreaux has no real evidence of his false allegations. Melanie is not an affiliated party with any criminal act. There is no proof to that she is a suspect or anything else. Gilbert Police has stated she is not a suspect in the alleged shooting at Brandon and that his claims have no supporting evidence that Melanie was a part of any alleged illegal act. 
In fact, Mr. Boudreaux's statements about what allegedly happened became progressively more self-serving every time he told his story. Mr. Boudreau and his attorney make claims in the court filing that are clearly not true. Mr. Boudreau knows are not true. His own exhibits, along with additional information that will be provided, will show that as well. Melanie has been victimized by her ex-husband, both during her marriage to him and now after. The truth is, Brandon Boudreau is using their children and making false claims to try to control Melanie's life even now. He is attempting to mislead the court and the public for which there will be consequences. Okay, so this attorney, Melanie's attorney, is saying that Brandon is trying to control Melanie's life. Didn't Melanie get married very quickly? just like Lori did. Um, somebody shot at Brandon and it was in a Jeep and we could see that Lori and Chad were rolling a tire into her storage shed and taking a seat and putting it in her storage shed. We saw all of that. And Gilbert Police... It says in here that this lawyer is saying that Gilbert police are saying that Melanie is not a suspect. Well, if Melanie is married to, or was married to Brandon, she's not now, she's married to Ian, but if she was married to Brandon and Brandon was shot at and a tire from a Jeep was rolled into Lori's store shed, it's all connected. So I cannot see how Melanie could not be a suspect. And she got married very quickly, right? In November. And Brandon was shot at in October. So this lawyer saying that Brandon's lawyer is making false accusations. This lawyer here is saying that Melanie was not part of a cult and is not a suspect. She should be a suspect, right? Let me know what you think in the comments below about all of this. Um, it seems like Melanie was trying to do the same thing that Lori was trying to do, trying to get rid of anything that could stop her from marrying Ian. Um, because Brandon was not killed, because he made it through and is still alive, her children are still alive, we don't know because he was not killed. We don't know if she was going to say that her children are zombies and try to get rid of her children as well. But it says here that she has always been a good mother. Um, but she did leave her stuff just like Lori left stuff in her storage shed of her children. Her children are missing. Uh, evidently, Melanie's children are not missing. If Lori's children are a part of a cult and are somewhere alive, wouldn't Melanie's kids be there too? You know, it's all twisted and crazy, but... From the way I look at it, Melanie was on track to do the same thing that Lori did. She was following in her footsteps, is what I see, just by the behaviors. Uh, Brandon was not killed. He made it through. And it looks like Lori was trying to keep all of her past, like her children and her ex-husband, from interfering in her new marriage. That's what it looks like to me. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for clicking in. Have a wonderful day.